Um, so thank you so much for being here, Bethany. We're so excited to hear from you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and excited to share with you guys. Um, so like Kim said, I'm a diamond. I um, started with Plexus in Actually, I was a New Year's Eve, you know, New Year's revolu resolution join in uh, at the end of 2015 um, and just here for the health benefits told my sponsor, don't ever ask me to share. I dabbled in network marketing before um, and I was like, don't want anything to do with it. Um, and so I'm one of those. Y'all probably heard that story a hundred times, um, but ended up diving into it, sharing it, um, went enrolled in about 18 months and then diamond, uh, at about the three year mark. Um, so I've been a diamond for a little over three years and it has been an amazing journey full of lots of ups and downs. Um, but I want to, I love this. Um, you know, you kind of attract who you are. And so I know that Kim is a woman of faith and, um, seems to be building a team of the same. And so um, I'm a pastor's wife, and so I'm uh, just going to shoot with y'all very uh, biblically um, because I do think that it can be tricky as Christian women um, to kind of get caught up in some of these, uh, what I would say, maybe like old school thoughts or thoughts that we were raised to believe that genuinely are lies that might be um, keeping us stuck and keeping us from pursuing all that God has for us in this. Um, so just a quick backstory, my husband became a lead pastor back in 2015, summer of 2015. I had not yet joined Plexus. Um, we had worked our whole life a little uh, about us. We got, I got pregnant when I was um, 19. And so we ended up getting married in 19 and 20. Um, so kind of crazy start to our lives together. And my husband always knew he wanted to be a pastor, um, but we took a little bit of a detour there with the decision we had made. And so our whole marriage, had, we had been working to get him to the point of being a pastor. And so when he stepped into that role, I started to feel kind of lost. And I was like, okay, um, this is his purpose. This is his calling. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm obviously here to support him, um, but I'm not showing up day to day to be the pastor. And like, God, what now for me? I'm just kind of feeling like I didn't have purpose. And so I started praying and asking the Lord to give me a, a new passion, a new purpose, and just really started feeling the stirring in my heart that God was about to birth some kind of women's ministry in me. I have always loved women's ministry, passionate about um, discipling women. And so I was like, okay, this is going to be good. God, what do you have for me? Um, and so I went through this season of just waiting and praying and waiting. And then, um, in December of 2015, I joined Plexus and I never put the two together. Um, because again, I swore off network marketing, but it became very evident to me that the ministry that God was going to birth in me was Plexus was this network marketing business. And he really opened my eyes to see that I had put him in a box of what I felt like he was capable of working through. And in my mind, I was like, no way is God going to work through me through a network marketing company. Like he's got like traditional ministry for me. Um, but y'all, if I could tell you, this has been more of a ministry to me than anything else. Um, I never could have imagined it. And just to give you a little bit. There's a girl on my team and every event that we have, where we all get together, she asks me more and more questions. She's not a believer. And she asks me more and more questions and each time. And I just am fully believing that she's going to come to know the Lord through this opportunity and through our relationship that I built through this. So this has very much become a ministry for me. Um, something that the Lord just like blew blew me away with that. I never imagined. Um, we were, like I said, my husband's a pastor. I always stayed at home. We were single income ministry family. Um, basically just living paycheck to paycheck, just trying to get by. Um, but there were some things and some lies that I had to overcome to really find success in this. And to do, and I believe that God gave me this for a reason, but there were still some things that I had to work through. Um, so the first lie that I think a lot of us believe as Christian women is that it's wrong to want more. 
that it's wrong for us to want more from life. Um, but here's what I want to tell you. I want you guys to think about passions, things that you are passionate about, um, dreams that you have, you know, maybe what makes you cry, what makes you um, sing, like, what are you excited about? And, and maybe you, you, you uh, have dreamed about doing, um, but maybe your roadblock has been finances or has been uh, time or whatever it might be. And so what I want to ask you is that if God put a dream and a passion in your heart, don't you think that he already has a plan to provide for that to come to fruition? And what if that plan is plexus? And so for me, I had to realize, okay, it's not selfish if God put it there. If God put a desire in me, a passion, a desire, dreams of things that I've always wanted to do and believed he wanted me to do, but I didn't know how, then why would I not believe that he had a plan for that? And why would I put God in a box to not believe that it could be a network marketing company? Isn't it just like God to use something so unconventional to do extraordinary things, places that we wouldn't expect to find him. And so I believe that Plexus has, has been the vehicle for us. Um, we always, I've always had a heart of generosity. I believe that God created all of us to be generous, but we're not all positioned to be generous. And that might not always look like making more money. Sometimes that's, we got to get our own finances in order and our budget in order. Um, but I believe that Plexus has been that avenue for us to be the generous people that we always wanted to be. Um, for a lot of our lives, people had to fill in the gaps for us. And now we're getting to be that for other people. Um, and so I love in the Bible, God talks about, he says, um, Jesus says, I've come that they would have life and that they would have it to the full. And so I want you to think about what does it look like living to the full? I think that that looks like fully living into the purpose that God has called us to, no matter what that might be. And it might be something unconventional, but we have to stop thinking that it's selfish. And here's what I will tell you that I think so often we use selfishness as an excuse behind our fear. I think a lot of times there is a fear there because this, uh, this forces us to rely on, on God. I have told people over and over again, if you know anything about me, I'm an Enneagram seven. I've always, I struggle. I'm a commitment phobe. I struggle to stick with things. Um, I'm kind of really unorganized until Plexus. That was a huge personal growth aspect for me. If it were not for Jesus, I would not be at the top of this company. I've had to rely. I've had to trust. And I think a lot of times we have this fear of what if I'm not capable? What if I can't do this? What if I fail? And a lot of times we disguise that fear with the excuse of this is selfish. I, I shouldn't want more. This is selfish when really at the root, it's just a fear that we have ourselves. Um, okay. So are we willing to trust God in this uh, for him to sanctify us through this? Because God has used this process to sanctify me through and through to show me a lot of areas of pride in my life to show me areas of uh, where I am lacking in my relationship with others, so many different things. Um, but just believe it is not wrong to want more. The other one is that poverty equals godliness. A lot of my life, I was raised to believe that if you had money, that money was evil, right? A lot of times you will hear money is evil and money will make you, you know, turn into this horrific person. Um, but it's not money. It's that's evil. It's the love of money. The Bible says the love of money. And so often people take that out. And I was raised in this very traditional mindset. My parents didn't have a lot when we were growing up. And so I think sometimes they just use that like, oh, we just depend on God. We have nothing. And that's a good thing because we have to depend on God. And yes, we do have to depend on God um, for everything. Everything that we have comes from him, but it's when, um, 
it's when we place the things that God has given us and we live open-handed with it. God does great things through people who have been blessed and are willing to bless other people. It's not wrong to have money. It's all about your mindset behind that money. Do you view it as yours? Are you only pursuing selfish things through that? Or do you genuinely look for the more and the financial gain that you're looking for from this is so that you can do kingdom work so that you can put it into the hands of people who need it and genuinely make an impact on the world. I don't care what anybody says. It takes money to live. Everybody needs it. And it's not a bad thing to have money. All right. And then the last lie, and I think this one is huge. It was one that I struggle with. It's one I coach mindset on probably more than anything else in the mamas on my team. And it's the lie that I can't be a good mom while being a successful business owner. And this is something that I struggle with. So Right. I have three boys. I'm a mom of three boys right now. They are 14, 10 and eight. But when I first started in this six years ago, um, I had a two-year-old, a three-year-old and a gosh, what's 14 minus six, eight-year-old. So I had at least I had one in school, but I had two little littles at home. And so I wrestled with this. Um, what does this look like to be a present mom and still be able to be a successful business owner? So here's a question that I want to ask you guys. Do you feel guilty when you are at home with your kids and you are doing the dishes or you're doing laundry or your whatever household chore you're doing? Maybe you do. I've had some people who say, yeah, I actually do feel guilty, but I think by and large, we view those as things that are necessities that need to get done around the house. And our kids take a pause to do whatever they need to do while we're doing the dishes and laundry. And we don't think twice about it, but it comes to working our business. And we're like, we shouldn't be doing this. Like, what if our kids, you know, think we're not giving them attention. I don't know about y'all, but I, the, I feel like the generation that we're growing up in now is so kid centered, like we lose ourselves in our kids. And I'm not saying that we should not give our, our kids attention, but I remember growing up and we just played outside all day. My kids, my parents sure as heck weren't, didn't have eyes on me all the time. And we turned out just fine. Right. But here's the, the bigger thing that I, that I want to point out to you guys. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have read Pro Proverbs 31 and talking about the Proverbs 31 woman who is noted as being noble. And in Proverbs 31, 24, it says she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. And it doesn't say, and she feels guilty about it. And it doesn't say, and her kids resented it, resented her for it. It actually says her children rise up and bless her, her husband also. So this Proverbs 31 woman, this noble woman that so many of us, you know, look to aspire to be, she wasn't just taking care of her home. She was also making linen garments and selling them. She was a hardworking woman and her children still rose up and called her blessed. Y'all, there's so much that your children can see through your hard work, so much that they can learn through your hard work. Here is the kicker. And, and this is the point that you have to decide, do I want this? Now, this business can take up so much of your life that you're making it an idol and your kids are not getting the time that they deserve. That can be a real thing. But if you are willing to manage your time and take a hold of your time, then I promise you there is plenty of time for you to be present with your kids. In fact, I encourage it but you have to learn how to prioritize the things that are important in your life and give them all a spot. I don't know if y'all are, um, we have become really big Dave Ramsey, uh, disciples. So we were actually able to, uh, become debt-free in 2018, thanks to Plexus and kind of fo followed his plan. But he said, um, if you don't tell your money where to go, it will tell you where it's going. Y'all, your time is the exact same way. If you don't tell your time where to go, it will tell you where it's going. And so it's just a matter of telling your time 
where to go and making sure that you have those pockets of time that are for your business, for your kids. And when it's your kid and family time, you set those boundaries and you say, okay, my notifications are turned off. I'm telling my team from this time to this time, I'm not answering messages because I'm present. I'm here with my family. Something that I love to do, different people do it different ways. I am a little too scatterbrained to do one whole week at a time. Some people like to do that. I like to just do the day ahead. And so I will lay, I will spend five to 10 minutes. That's all it takes at night. And I will look at the next day ahead and I'll say, okay, what do I have going on tomorrow? Like what appointments do I have? Where do I need to be, you know, getting my kids? What do I need to get done when it comes to my business? And then I look at my day ahead and I tell my, my time where it's going to go. Okay. This is where I'm going to do, I'm going to work this pocket of my business right here. And, um, I've got to take, you know, Micah to the doctor at this time. So I'm off the clock. Then this is when I'm going to do, you know, housework that needs to get done. This is a time where it's just me and my husband time. You slot it out and give everything a spot. Does this take a little bit of discipline? A hundred percent. Is it worth it? A hundred percent because that is time freedom. Because when you have already mapped out what your day is going to look like, then those moments you're working your business, you don't have to feel guilty because you know, that pocket of time that you're fully focused on your family and your kids is either coming or you already did it or vice versa. Um, when you are with your kids and you feel like, oh my gosh, what if people are messaging me and I'm not answering it? You know what? I did my business for today. This is my family time. And y'all, let me just tell you that it is not an emergency for you to answer somebody's message. If they wouldn't wait for you to get back to them for eight, you know, three to five hours or whatever it takes, they're probably not going to be people who are going to stick with the products anyways. And it's probably just a waste of your time. So just, you have to take that sense of urgency out of it sometimes, or else you'll drive yourself nuts and you will become a slave to your phone. I've had so many people on my team just say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just on my phone too much and it's not healthy for me. Guess what? You control how much you're on your phone. And so if you're on your phone too much, that's a you problem. That's not your phone's problem. And so it's all about finding that self-discipline, all the self-disciplines. And I just want y'all to know, because it is so easy to look at someone's chapter 20 when you're at chapter one. This has been so much of a growth process for me over the last six years. The word self-discipline in me were like not even in the same dictionary. Like I am not, never used to be an organized person. I never used to be a self-disciplined person. Um, but again, I'm here to tell you six years into this and the blessings that it has provided for my family, it is worth it to do the personal growth, to grow yourself in these areas. It is possible. All that to say, and, and I'm spending the most time on this one because I, I hear this the most often, it is possible to be a present, involved, amazing mother and a successful business owner. And so I am someone who fully believes that if you have been introduced to this business, if you are here, you guys are taking 30 minutes out. I'm assuming most of you, if not all of you are going to convention tomorrow, you're taking time out tonight to be on this call that you're here for a reason. You've been brought to Plexus for a reason. And so I want to kind of wrap things up with, I created this kind of mission statement for my team um, where I was like, okay, God, I want my team to know that this is what I want said of our team. This is who I want our team to be. And I'm believing that God brought this business into my life and into the women's life who are underneath me for a reason. Um, so kind of our, our team vision statement is we are a team who chases after God-sized dreams and believes that they are possible because we serve a God who is bigger than we can imagine. Our businesses are a vehicle of purpose for what God wants to accomplish in us and through us. We believe that we are who God says that we are and that the one who called us is faithful and he will do it. Y'all, if he called you here, he will be faithful to show up and provide the time for you, 
provide the knowledge for you, the wisdom for you, the leadership skills for you, whatever it takes to be successful in this. And your journey is going to look different than any other person's on this team. But it's such a step-by-step process. What I have learned, if if y'all know the verse in the Bible that says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And one time my youth pastor's wife said to me, she said, you know, back in the day, they didn't have light bulbs and they didn't have flashlights. They had just this little lantern and literally all that they could see was the one step ahead of them. And they just trusted in that one step ahead. And so that's really what this whole business has been for me is praying and asking for wisdom, surrendering it all to the Lord and saying, okay, whatever you're calling me to, I'm going to take that next step. And I'm going to trust that you're going to show up and you're going to give me the wisdom that I need to lead as as I uh, got married at, at 19, dropped out of college, you know, someone like me, if God can show up and lead me to where he has led me, he will be faithful to do the same thing for you. And so I hope that's encouraging. Um, and I was telling Kim today, cause like she said, we're all kind of like frazzled trying to do the last minute things. But I said, my hope for this is that this really opens your eyes and maybe exposes some lies that you've chosen to believe that you can now replace with truth. And you can go into convention this week with fresh eyes, seeing all that is possible and believing and knowing that it's possible um, and that you can walk in truth in all of these areas, knowing that you are a good mama and a good business owner, that it's okay to pursue more, that God put those dreams on your heart for a reason and that it's okay to be blessed financially, that God will take that and he will use it if you will just live open-handed. So thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. Kim, do you have, if anybody has questions? Yeah, no, that was so good. Thank you so much. I know it spoke to me. I can tell. I know it spoke to some of the girls on here. Um, But I, does anybody have any specific questions for Bethany while we have her? It's pretty cool to have this opportunity. I know I saw a question about that team mission statement. If we can see like a copy of that written out or something, it's really cool. Um, I love that too. Does anybody else want to unmute themselves and ask a question? Um, whether it's practical, how she fits into her day, mindset stuff, any of it. What do you guys think? Patty, are you going to say something? Yeah. Hey, I just, first of all, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, First of all, thank you uh, for this call because you're amazing. Okay. I have felt for a long time that God has called me to something. Yeah. I feel like he's going to use plexus as the avenue, but I keep doubting myself, uh, that I am capable and that this is where I'm supposed to be. So I heard everything that you said tonight, just, um, really it laid it on my heart that I believe that this is the avenue that I'm supposed to be at. I believe that Uh, the women that I am supposed to reach are here. And um, I just want to thank you for taking your time to to speak to us and speak your truth and just know that um, you're amazing. So thank you. you. So incredible. You're so incredible. I hope to, I will see you at convention. Yeah. And I don't have, Okay. I usually don't wear glasses. So, but when I do and y'all come up and hug you, please don't run. I'm not, I won't. It's okay. (laughs) Convention is such a funny, it is such a funny thing, especially with the world of Instagram. Like, um, I'll have people run up and be like, Oh my gosh, I follow you on Instagram. I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. Um, how did you, um, how did you overcome the fear when you first started? I mean, I know that it was scary for you just to just, just took that leap of faith and just jumped into it. And then I know it it can be messy at times getting where you need to be. And it can be discouraging at times because, you know, you have all these balls up in the air being a young mom and, and doing something that's scary. Um, how did you get past that? Um, so one, I will very much endorse the book, nothing to prove by Jenny Allen. Um, it's so good. And 
it's funny because um, what network marketing has done for me or what this Plexus business has done for me and the, the personal development that I've been forced to do overflows into every role. Um, it doesn't, and I tell my team this all the time, um, the way that you grow in Plexus is not just for Plexus. Um, one of my favorite things when we were in Hawaii a couple years ago on a trip, um, one of the video people pulled my husband aside and um, was like, can I, can we interview you? And he was like, sure. And so they asked and they said, what has been your favorite part of, um, of your wife doing Plexus? And he said, watching how it has grown her as a mom, as a wife, as a pastor's wife, um, as a worship leader, I'm a worship leader at our church too, just the way it has overflowed into everything. And so it was kind of cool how the Lord used it because as a pastor's wife, you can have a lot of the same fears of um, what do people expect me to be? How do they expect me to show up and serve in the church and always feeling those, you know, that neediness from people. And so I feel like I kind of grew in both avenues at the same time with network marketing and with my role as a pastor's wife. Um, but also really just making sure that you have rock solid belief in yourself, in our products and in this industry. Um, and so kind of evaluating yourself, I always tell people, take a, a quick evaluation of where you would rate your belief in yourself from one to 10, our products from one to 10, and in this uh, you know, business opportunity from one to 10 and look at that rating. And that'll kind of show you those areas that you maybe need to pour belief into. Um, and, and I think when you have rock solid belief in those three things, it, it gets you over that fear. There's always going to be fear. Fear mm -hmm. is natural, but we can choose to stay paralyzed in it or we can overcome it. And I think it's belief that allows us to overcome those things. Right. Thank you so much. That You're is welcome. so helpful. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Rachel, I'm not sure you might be getting kids to bed, but I know, I know we've had some conversations. I mean, I've had so many conversations with you guys. I feel like we all struggled with that fear of like, I shouldn't say a fear, but I think the the want for more. I even, I struggle with it now. I'm struggling to even try to want to go for Sapphire. Um because I'm like, I already have more than enough. God's already blessed me. We're already able to bless others. Like, and it just feels selfish. Um, and then I realized that I have to flip that on its head. Like, well, it would be selfish if it was just about me, but the point is it's not about me. It's about what it can do for other people. And even the people that will look at me and be like, well, if that's possible for Kim and her family, what could be possible for me and my family? But it is, it's such a, I think the enemy is so crafty. He knows the things <laughs> And I grew up with a lot of the poverty mindset stuff too. So, and I absolutely have struggled with Brooke Hemingway and I've been talking a lot lately that lie that you can't really be a good, a really good and present mom. And you're right. I think it's actually a cop out because we're afraid to do the work on ourselves and with time management and boundaries and all the things that it requires to actually be a present mom and be successful at this. So this was so good. Oh, Rachel. Hey, did you have anything or a question for Bethany or anything? Anybody? Yeah. Before? I was just going to say, I was listening in, um, all my family left for church camp. So I forgot that I had the toddler by myself, but it was so good. So good. I was going to tell you too, like when it comes to that want for more, I think that's where it comes in your ever evolving. Why? Um, and so for me, when I reached that point of like debt-free was huge for me, um, we never could put any extra money towards debt. And I just thought we'd have student loans forever. Um, so that was a big part of my why and, and being more generous. And then, um, you know, you just evolve that why as you go. And so I think for me, looking at ranks as if I reach this rank, it's because more people underneath me are reaching their why and I'm helping them. I'm showing up every day, not because I want some title or even the, the need for the more money, but what that money is showing and that title is showing is that even more people are being impacted. Um, and so, you know, I think my why has changed so much since I first started because so many of those initial things happened for me and you do have to kind of reevaluate and say, okay, well, what is my why now? And that for me always looks like surrender. Um, just like, okay, Lord, like I'm giving this over to you. I don't really know what the more is, 
but why are you still calling me to more? Why are you, why do you still have me here? Um, and so just make sure that you're always revisiting your why, um, because that is going to be the, the driving force behind everything that you do. All right. Anybody else have anything before we hop off? No. Okay. Also super fun since Nashville, Tanisha goes to my church now. So how cool is that? That Plexus connected us and now she goes to our church. <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. Super, super grateful for that. Like it was like literally God's timing couldn't have been better. Like we needed that more than anything. And just like you said, like Plexus has done so much for us, you know, not just the supplements, like it has just made an impact in so many ways. And I'm just forever grateful. And I'm so excited to see you all in just a couple of days. I know, same. I just found out today, Bethany, I are on the same flight out tomorrow morning. <laughs> like, Yay. that's so cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know this is going to be my first convention. Oh, actually, I guess that would be a great last question, actually, Bethany, if you could give us one word of advice heading into our first convention, because I'm pretty sure everybody on my team, it's our first. Um, I mean, whether it's preparing your mind on the flight up there, or if you're driving, or if it's any, any tip that you have. Yeah. So a couple of things I would say is one, soak it all in um, learn as much as you can. Um, something I tell my team, like, even if there are topics that you're like, Oh, I already know how to do this or, Oh, like avoid the temptation to get on your phone, uh, in the sessions and just soak in all that you can. Um, there will be time to work later. This is your time to, to learn. Um, the other thing that I would tell you, and I can say this as a diamond who, I love when people come up to me. It is not bothersome. Take advantage of being around all of these leaders who are crushing it. Um, and I, something that a girl on my team does that I think is brilliant. I never thought of this before, but every week she looks at the leaderboard and who's on the leaderboard. And then she goes and starts like following them on social media just to like watch what they're doing. Um, but I'm sure plenty of you have seen names of people who are incredible at, at what they do. Um, go ask them like a top tip or what's one piece of advice you would give me or, you know, something like that, like take advantage of being in the midst of all these people, um, and, and ask the questions. Thank you so much, Bethany. This was an awesome call. And, um, I'm really grateful you made the time, especially when I know it's just a busy week. So thank you yeah. again. You're welcome. Excited to see you guys soon. Yes. Yay. All right. See y'all. Good night.